going to start with uh, the tafsir of Surah al and then we shall proceed, uh, proceed to the explanation of and who's the good of the Shaykh Ibrahim, the Sufyan, the Sayyidin, and the Sayyidin, the Sayyidin, the Surah al is a Surah al Madariya, a bit of it was revealed in one go in the sixth year of Hijrah. When the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made Hijrah from Medina to Munawwara, he came down in the sixth year of that Hijrah. And he had to say, Ah, I'm a son, inshallah, I'm a son, inshallah, I'm a son. Inshallah, the way I'm going to do it is, the surah is based upon a story. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to first go to the first page as our normal way that we do. And now I'll narrate the story in the Lahi ta'ala. And then inshallah we'll come back to the actual tafsir of the surah. And then inshallah where the story fits into the actual surah in the Lahi ta'ala. Allah Allah ta'ala Allah said, Inna indeed we, fatahna laka, we have given you a victory, fatahan, a victory, mubin, and a clear victory. Indeed, we have given you a clear victory of Muhammad. Why did we do this? فَعَنَّا ذَلِكَ لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ So Allah may forgive your sins. مَا تَقَدَّمَ That which proceeded from your sins وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ And that which is to come in the future. وَيُتِمَّ أَيْ وَلِيُتِمَّ So that Allah also bestows نِعْمَتَهُ His favor عَلَيْكَ upon you. وَيَهْدِيَكَ أَيْ وَلِيَهْدِيَكَ So Allah can also guide you siratan to the path the path which is mustaqiman the straight path so the reason we gave you this victory of Muhammad is for these reasons also وَيَنْصُرَكَ أَيْ وَلِيَنْصُرَكَ so Allah may also aid you nasran an أَيْ azizan a mighty aid so the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to give this clear victory to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we will find out later on what the victory is, is for these reasons. Huwa Allah is alladhi the one. Anzala sakina to send down tranquility fi qulub al in the hearts of the believers. Liyazdadu so they may increase iman and in iman. مَعَ إِمَانِهِمْ Along with the iman that they already had. وَلِلَّهِ and to Allah belong جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ The soldiers of the heavens. وَالْأَرْضِ أَيْ وَجُنُودُ الْأَرْضِ And the soldiers of the earth via the believers. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ and Allah is عَلِيمًا وَنَوْنْ حَكِيمًا وَوَائِزْ لِيُدْخِلَ That's متعلق وَلِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَمْ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا so the reason why likewise we're giving you a clear victory is لِيُدْخِلَ So Allah may enter. الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The believing men وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And the believing women جَنَّاتٍ Into gardens. Those gardens which تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَا Beneath it flow الْأَنْهَارُ rivers. خَالِدِينَ وَالْحَالِ Whilst they are ones who are going to abide فِيهَا Inside there forever. وَيُكَفِّرَ أَيْ وَلِيُكَفِّرَ So Allah may also expiate anhum from them, the believers, سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ their sins. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ And indeed that is in the Allah, in the sight of Allah, فَوْزًا A true success. That success which is عظيما, a great success. وَيُعَذِّبَ وَلِيُعَذِّبَ So Allah may also punish الْمُنَافِقِينَ the Hypocrite men, والمنافقات and the hypocrite women, والمشركين and the dis and the polytheist men, والمشركات and the poly and the polytheist females, women. الظانين those who assume the name of Allah, ظن سوي the assumption of evil. They assume evil of Allah, so Allah is giving you victory, so He may punish these four groups of people. They assume the evil of Allah, alayhim da'iratu sawm. May evil circulate around them. May evil befall around them, upon them. 
وغضب الله and Allah is angry عليهم upon them ولعنهم and Allah has cast them وعد لهم and he's prepared for them Jahannam is prepared for them the hell fire وساءت and what an evil nasir and destination Jahannam is والعياض بالله ولله and to Allah belong جنود السماوات the soldiers of the heavens والأرضي هو جنود الأرض and likewise the soldiers of the earth وكان الله and indeed Allah is عزيزا ومايتي حكيما وواز Inna indeed we. Arsalnaka sent you, O Muhammad, shahidan as a witness over your ummah. Wa mubashiran and one who gives glad tidings to the believers. Wa nadiran and one who also warns the disbelievers. Why did we send you as a messenger? And why did we send you as a warner? And why did we send you as one who gives glad tidings? Litu'minu so they may, litu'minu so you people may believe. Bilahin Allah wa rasuli and his messenger. وَتُعَزِّرُوهَا you may support him وَتُوَقِّرُوهَا you may honor him the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ and so that you may glorify and exalt Allah بُكْرَةً every morning وَأَصِيلًا also in the evenings this page Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he spoke about a victory in which he's going to give to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he says, this victory that I'm going to give you, O Muhammad, which is soon going to come, is a clear victory. In which something amazing is going to happen after this victory takes place. Now the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this victory, is so Muhammad's sins of the past, sins of the future may be forgiven too. Likewise, Allah may bestow His mercy upon him, His uh, favor upon him, by allowing Islam to spread further. We'll understand what this is later, inshaAllah. Number four, so may Allah may guide Muhammad وسلم, to the clear cut guidance. And number four, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may also aid Muhammad وسلم, a great aid. We'll see what this is, inshaAllah. Allah also mentioned other reasons. He said the reason he's going to give this victory is so. Number six, the believing men and women can be entered into Jannah because they will pass the test and then they're going to enter Jannah. And number seven, so Allah may expiate their sins. Number eight, so Allah may punish the hypocrite men and women. We'll see how. And likewise, Allah may also punish the disbelieving polytheist men and women. These are the nine reasons why Allah is going to give this victory which will come unto insha'Allah ta'ala in the story when I narrate it. The story is as follows. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made hijrah from where to where? What was the main hijrah he made in his life? Mecca to Medina to Munawwah. When he came to Medina, six years living in Medina, it's important to understand the, the Meccans and the Medanis, they had a lot of turmoil between them. There was no trading between them, no exporting of goods, no importing of goods. They hated each other, animosity, hatred. Yani, the situation was not easy between them. It wasn't easy for someone to easily go to Mecca from Medina. Likewise, Medina to Mecca. That's because the Prophet ﷺ was persecuted. And then he made hijrah after Allah commanded him to go to Medina. In the sixth year, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a dream. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he slept, he had a dream. In his dream, he saw the companions and him go to Umrah. Then they went Umrah and they performed Umrah. All of their hair, their hair was shaved. And they were all there in Mecca. It's strange, right? Why? Because of this animosity between them, it isn't something normal for the believers to just go and perform for us. Now the prophets, their dreams are revelation. Prophets, their dreams are revelation. So the Messenger وسلم, he saw this as Allah telling him, Muhammad, prepare yourself, pack your bags, take what you need, take your goods, and go before Allah. It's as if Allah is sending revelation in the form of the Quran because this is revelation for him. Everybody with me? So what did the Prophet do? 
He told the companions, who were 1,400 at this time. He told them, guys, get ready, we're going to go to Mecca to perform Umar. <coughs> so the companions, the overwhelming majority of them, they got up, they prepared, but there were some hypocrites that said, we're not going to come. And their main reasons were two reasons. The hypocrites were left behind. The reason why they didn't come with the Prophet wasallam was number one, they said, we're not sure if you people are going to return. Which is quite valid, right? Why is it valid? Because it's danger for them to go to Mecca. The Ansar and also the Muhajirun that live in Medina currently, they can't come into Mecca with ease. The Quraysh are there waiting for them to persecute them white ones. So they said, the first reason we're not going to come is we don't even know if the Messenger and likewise the people that go with him, if you're going to return in one piece. You guys are going to get killed. The second reason is, we are too busy with the family, the children, our wives, and likewise work. You see, work is on me. Of course, it wasn't a 9 to 5 then. But, you know, I can't get time off work. Unfortunately, we can't come. So what are the two reasons? Number one, we're not even sure if you people are going to come back safely. The Prophet said seven, and those that go with him, we're scared they might not come back in one piece. They, they will get killed. And number two, we're too busy with work and family duties. So these people, they stay behind. Later on, we're going to find out Allah, He gave them the title of being hypocrites. Because <coughs> what was it? What, was, what were they meant to do? Sabina <laughs> wa The Prophet said, Allah told us to do something, we're going to do it. Khalas. Al Muhim. The companions, they packed their bags, they got ready. The Prophet said, Allah is riding these, they took what they needed, etc., etc. They made their way from Medina to Mecca. To do what? To do what? Perform Umar. Are they going for any fighting? No. Nah. War? No. Nah. Spoils of war? No. Nah. Nothing. They just want to perform Umar. And they don't even want to live in Mecca. They just want to come straight back to Medina. So they're on their way, they're on their way, they're on their way, they're on their way. The Prophet is riding beast stopped. His camel stopped. A place called Al Hudaybiyah. Hudaybiyah is on the way to Mecca. Just before you enter Mecca, and it's I mean, Allah described it to be in the in the depths of Mecca, but it's just before you enter it. What happened? The Prophet came and stopped. And it was not moving. And then the companions they said, Ya Rasulullah, what's happening? And he has it been afflicted by some sort of uh, magic or have Quraysh done something to the camel? Why has it stopped? And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La Allah, the Lord that stopped the elephant when it was on the way to destroy the Kaaba made this camel stop as well." So what they done was they camped, slash, they made some tents and they just stayed in the Bidayah because what's their aim? Are they going to go back? La. The Prophet said, I've seen a dream and this revelation to say perform Umrah. So they stayed in Hudaybiyah. As they're there, news went around Mecca. News went around Mecca that Muhammad Sallam and his companions are plotting to come inside Mecca and to kill the Kufar of Quraysh. And they're currently waiting to plan out how they will do this strategically. That's the news that went around where? Mecca. <coughs> so what happened was, the leaders of the Meccan tribes, they sent a representative to come to the Prophet Wasallam and tell him, you can't perform Allah. Turn back. You know you're not allowed to come into Mecca. And you know what will happen. And he's going to be fighting. And there's going to be war, etc. We're not going to allow you. So go back. This man's name was Urwa. So Urwa comes to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he comes to Urwa, when, when Urwa comes to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Urwa says to the Messenger Ya Muhammad, he says words along the lines of, are you not tired of wars? Because there were wars before that, right? It's not the first time that they go into war and speech marks. Why are you always trying to make the people become differentiated? Why are you trying to differ the people? Why are you always against unity? You always want to fight, 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 etc. 
And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Wallahi, we have not come to fight. And if anything, we are the ones who unite the people, we unite them upon la ilaha illallah. That's what uniting is. All we have come to do is perform umrah. Nothing else. And then Umrah, he saw these new faces that he's never seen before. Who are these new faces? So Umrah is from where? Mecca, right? Who are the new faces? The 1,400 companions of the Prophet Who are these new faces that Umrah seen? The Ansar. Remember the Muslims are divided into the Muhajirun and Ansar, those who migrated from Mecca with the Prophet to Medina. And then those that when the Prophet came to Medina, Medina was mainly made up of Banu Nadir and Banu Qaynuqa'i, and Jews, right? Those that became Muslim in Medina, they are called the Ansar. So Urwa is saying, who are these new people? They're not even going to be able to defend you. And you haven't even known them for long. They're just going to betray you. And then what happened, one of the companions, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who's usually known to be very soft-spoken, kind, and soft, mashallah, he got up and he got angry. And he said something to him, and then he said, Wallahi, we will defend him. It doesn't matter all of these people, where they came from, it's la ilaha illallah, which has, and he brought us together, and the brotherhood of Islam is bigger than anything. It's not connected to time. And then what happened was, as they're speaking, they're speaking, they're speaking, Urwa and the Prophet ﷺ trying to agree to say, you're not coming in, no, you're coming in, etc. The Prophet ﷺ, Bilal radiallahu anhu, he got up, Bilal ibn Rabah, and he started to make adhan. So Salatul Dhuhr, Asr, one of them. And the Prophet ﷺ said to Urwa, Salatah, our Lord is calling us, let's stop our negotiations there. They prayed the Salatul Khawf, the Salat of Faith. Uh, it's described in the Quran where some of the companions they weren't praying with them and once they prayed they would come over there and they have their weapons somewhat protected and the others go with rows etc etc when they finished the salah they came back but before the salah sorry to mention the Prophet وسلم, needed to do wudu so as the Prophet is making wudu the companions are fighting to see if he gives them the water first not fighting physically but because they all want this honor of helping the Prophet وسلم, they all were like, racing to go get the water for him to be at his service. Then the Prophet وسلم, he starts making wudu. And the narration says, every piece of water that drips from the Prophet, وسلم, the companions would race again to catch the water, wipe themselves on it. The bark of the Prophet. وسلم. When the Prophet وسلم, would do his shark and the mother, you know, you put your the, the water in your mouth and then you release it, they would run to catch his saliva. And they wipe themselves on it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallam, saliva, likewise, drips on his body, etc. It's barakah. A hadith came in. Other people, there's no barakah in it. If anyone says to you, if you want to be wali of Allah, Allah of Allah, etc., do these things, man. Al Muhim. Urwa, he was shocked. He went back and he said to Quraysh, Guys, I've seen something that I've never seen before. I've gone to the leaders of the Persians, the Romans. I've gone to the Abyssinian leader likewise. I've never seen a man that's respected like this man Muhammad Whenever water drips off him, they're racing to him. They're all standing next to him, protecting him. One of the companions likewise, uh, yani one of the, the rituals that the Arabs they do is when two leaders come, even we see it now as well, they would, for example, touch each other's beard, or maybe they would uh, uh, give salam to each other by their noses, something like this, right? But when he came, he tried to do that, Prophet Sallam. And one of the companions got up, he had a sword, he said, go to him one more time, and I'll slice your body in half. And Uruwa was confused. This man, how did he get 1,400 people to love him this much? There must be something. So he told Quraysh, look, all he wants to do is perform Umrah. He said he's just going to perform Umrah and leave. He's also even said, if we want, let, 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 let us go out, let him perform Umrah, and then we can come back inside. And just let's listen to him. He doesn't want a war. Then he got up and they said, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? Ah, etc., etc. Then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he realized that there was no one coming back, he, he decided to send one of the companions to agree with them. 
He sent one of the companions to agree with him. So he told Umar ibn Khattab, Ya Umar, go to them and negotiate with them. Tell them, yani, mashallah, we know Umar ibn Khattab, right? In the Meccan period, he was very well respected, man of power, everything else. Go to the Meccans, tell them who we want to use before Umar, nothing else. And we're going to be at peace, we're not going to come into Mecca again, we don't want to take over Mecca, nothing like that. So Umar ibn Khattab, he sent to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, you know my situation with them. I left them, they hate me, my honor is gone with them now and everything else. I think it's wiser, Ya Rasulullah, to tell Uthman to go. Because Uthman is more eloquently spoken as well. Likewise, he's not really as hated as I am in terms of, you know, Islam, etc., etc. The Prophet said, listen to him. He said, okay, Uthman, you go. When Uthman, radiallahu anhu, he went, to do what? Negotiate. It was meant to be a quick journey. Go, come back, khalas. Uthman radiallahu was not heard of. <coughs> time went by, time went by, time went by. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had thought that they killed him. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up out of his tent. And he told everybody to come to a tree. <coughs> everybody came under this tree. And the Prophet said, he said, anyone who is ready to pledge allegiance with me now, to go and fight against Quraysh, agree with me now. And they all got their hands out, they put their hands on top of each other, etc. All of the companions, they pledged allegiance with the Messenger of Allah. <laughs> there were one or two hypocrites. You know the time the Prophet had, uh, the Quraysh, even their ones, they hid behind it. And they didn't agree. Who's left, by the way? Uthman One of the benefits we'll come to later on is a virtue of Uthman that no one has, except a few of the Sahaba. The companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, what about Uthman? And then the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in some narrations they say, Dhamma yadahu, he puts two hands together, and some say he puts his hand out as well, and he put it together like this. al muhim he said, he put his hands together and he said, this hand is for Uthman and this is my hand. What does that prove? What does that prove? But what does that prove though? Why is it a virtue of Uthman? Relationship, what else? Look guys, this is a test of faith, right? The Prophet is saying to the companions, anyone who's ready now to go and fight, Right now, let's go. Someone of Iman, and he commands 1,400, how much are the Meccans? They're all still there, they've had kids, and grown up, and everything else. Uthman is not even there, and the Prophet Sallallahu is confirming if Uthman was here, he'd be with us. Are you with me or not? We're going to come on to I'tiqad, and just on I'tiqad, you should finally say, the theory, the masala pertaining to the Khulafa al Rashidin, which order are they in? We know of course Abu Bakr and Umar, but who's next for Uthman or Ali, right? These are one of the evidences that is used to prove Uthman is after Umar. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attested by point without even him being there. al muhim What happened after that was, the companions as they're preparing to go and fight, Uthman comes back. So there's no need to fight now. Then what happened, long story short, the Qista is very, very long. But to summarize it, a man by the name of Suhail came. Suhail. Suhail was the ambassador at that time in Mecca. At a high level when it came to <coughs> government ties. So Quraysh, they sent Suhail. Why did they send Suhail? Because of his position and authority. Who did the agreement fail with before? <coughs> Who did it fail with before? Urwa. The Quraysh angry at Urwa, right? Then they said Suhail. When Suhail came, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the companions, specifically Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar, and he smiled. And he said, Alhamdulillah, Suhail guys, Allah has something in store for us. So Suhail is there, and you can imagine the the fear, you might say, the tension, they've been camping in Fadebi at this place, they haven't come with food, they just made these tents. You can tell, I mean, the fear that's in them, they don't know what's going on. Why are the companions doing this? 
Because the Prophet ﷺ commanded him to do it. And why is Muhammad ﷺ doing this? Why? Because Allah made him see a dream, which is revelation. Benefit. Sami'na wa ta'na. We hear, we obey. So what happened was, Suhail, he comes to the Messenger of Hassan, and then he says to him, Muhammad, I heard you want to come perform Umrah, you don't want to fight, and this and that, etc. He said, let's go in agreement. The agreement, another word for it in English they say, is a treaty. Sulh. Let's come up with some sort of agreement where we can both be happy. So the Messenger of Allah said to him, okay, go ahead, let me hear it. Umar is with him, likewise Ali is with him. And Abu Bakr. He says, I'm going to give you three conditions. Our agreement, there will be three conditions on our agreement. The first one is that for the next 10 years there's going to be peace, no fighting between us. You guys come, you guys can come into Mecca, importing, exporting of goods, business, and no more fighting. We'll be happy. Everybody will be at peace. One. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is he going to say no to this? No. This is a good thing. He said the second thing is, you guys cannot perform Umrah this year, however. For one year, you can't perform Umrah. Come the years after, the agreement of 10 years peace, this year is not included. You have to wait this one year, don't come, go back. The Prophet sallallahu he agreed. Umar radiallahu anhu, he got up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, how can you do that? And he saw a dream. He questioned the Prophet sallallahu he said, Ya Rasulullah, how are you letting him do this? Alasna al haq are we not upon the truth? Was I said, yes. Are they not upon falsehood? He said, yes. Are we not going to be the ones that go to Jannah if we of course die upon Islam? Are they not the people of the Hafa? Yes. Then how is it you saw a dream, Ya Rasulullah, we don't want to perform it. It's a revelation. Then the Prophet said, yes, they are this. And yes, we are this. And yes, this is all true. Like in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something to stop us. Then he went to Abu Bakr. He said the same thing. Is Muhammad said, I'm not upon the truth? Yes. Are we not upon the truth? Yes. Are they not upon falsehood? Yes. Are they not going to fire? Yes. Then what's going on? And Abu Bakr said the exact same thing as Prophet said. He said, Wallahi, this man is upon the truth. Then what happened was, that's the second agreement, right? The third agreement, so far the first agreement was good, right? So far. The second one is seen as 50-50. You can't put one number for a year, but it's not the end of the world. The third agreement, so he said, anyone who is captive, or not captive, but accepts Islam, and then comes from us to you guys, you have to return it back to us. Is that clear or not? Let's say that again. Anyone who is captive and then he escapes and accepts Islam with you guys and he wants to become Muslim, you must return it to us. But anyone who leaves your religion and comes into our religion, we're not going to return them to you. Oh, this one's not good. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, however, he agreed. He said, okay. One of the things we need to realize, these things seem like what? Losses, right? The companions, they saw as losses. They were always like, what's going on? The Muslims are winning up on the truth, Ya Rasulullah. Why are you agreeing with all these things, etc., etc.? But the Prophet said, وَمَا يَمْدِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُوا The Prophet said, whenever he speaks, he thinks, whatever comes out of his mouth is upon what? Revelation. Allah is guiding him to say yes. What happened after that? A man by the name of Abu Jaddal came. Abu Jaddal. Abu Jaddal is a Sahabi, or he becomes a Sahabi. But he was one of the captives that were put into prison and persecuted in Mecca. He's not Muslim yet. He escaped. When, the, when he came and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hudaybiyah, in this specific agreement, this sitting, he looked at him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm Abu Jandal, I want to accept Islam, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, etc. Who was just agreed? Who was just agreed, guys? 
The third agreement was anyone who escapes and is a Muslim, but he escapes, you have to return to us. And they can do what they want with him, they can persecute, kill him, whatever. The Prophet وسلم, it was the first time ever narrated that he started to plead and beg Suhaib. First time he ever begged a human being. He said, Suhaib, just Abu Jannah, please. No one else. Yani, they, have they written the agreement yet, by the way? No. He said, just Abu Jannah. He said, nah. No, I don't agree. If you don't accept this, I don't want anything in. You're going to come to war with us. He said, just him. No one else, I promise. We haven't agreed yet. He said, no, 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 no. The Prophet said to Abu Jannah, he looked at him and he said, Isbir wa hitasib. So Abu Jannah, be patient and seek a reward with Allah. Abu Jannah had to go back later on, he was persecuted and tortured and everything else. One of the benefits we come to later on is what? Keeping promises. And stick into agreements, which we all need to work on. Look at this. The Prophet said, I'm in an agreement, right? Even though a whole companion's life was on the line, he didn't break the agreement. He said, Let's go. Inshallah, your reward will be, with, your reward will be with Allah. And when he, then they got pen and paper out. The Prophet said, Of course, pen and paper right. Yes? So Ali, radiallahu anhu, he says to Ali, Ali, start writing. So Ali starts writing. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That's how we start letters, right? So he saw this and he said, We know Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We know Allah. Again, ar-Rahman, we don't know. We don't know about Rahman who he is. Ar-Rahim, la la la. We're not going to accept this. We know Allah, God, that's it. And they, of course, as Allah mentioned in the Quran as well, this is the way they used to make fun of Allah's names and attributes. Wa Rahman. Who is the Rahman? Who is he, etc. So the Prophet said to Ali radiallahu anhu, Ali just, just, just wiped out Ar-Rahman and Rahim. I just write this with him. Ali was not for it, but he just wiped it out. Then they started writing the agreement. What did they say? This is an agreement between Muhammad sallallahu Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Suhaib. And the Suhaib saw this. He said, Rasulullah, la, 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 la. If we agree with you that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, we wouldn't be having this discussion. We know Muhammad, we don't agree he's Rasulullah. Why the hell as well? Ali radiallahu anhu wa anhu. This was from the pre-Islamic ignorant customs they had. Remember that word. <laughs> Pre-Islamic ignorant customs. Of what? Kibr. Who's Rahman? What's this Rahman? He's not Rasulullah. If this was the case, we wouldn't agree with that, etc. And you keep ignorance, arrogance, sorry, pride. The pride of pre-Islamic customs. So Ali radiallahu anhu said, so I'm not going to wipe this off. How am I going to wipe off that? You're Rasulullah. I believe you're Rasulullah. We can't accept everything. We can't say yes to everything. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's got, he got his blessed hand and he wiped it off with himself. Again, another loss. But he sees something that's coming. What happened after that was, the story finishes as follows. So he went back. The agreement is agreed. What are the three conditions? Number one, ten years, no fighting, peace, business, kind of car, everything. Secondly, one year they come from Umar. Thirdly, anyone that comes to the believers and accepts Islam, they have to be returned to the Quraysh, Kufar of Quraysh. The companions are upset, frustrated. Why are they frustrated? They didn't perform Umrah, but what else? They see it as a boss. Hey, what else? They all write answers, by the way. They felt humiliated. What else? The Prophet saw a dream, guys. That means what? Revelation. Is this not going to happen? We're not going to say they had doubt, but what, what about the dream? Are you with me? So anyways, on the way back, everybody's upset, no one's really on good terms, we lost, etc, etc. Umar again, he asked the same questions, are we not upon the truth? Yes we are, are they not going for us? Why is this happening? Then what happened was, they 
the Prophet Sallallahu he went to his wife Umm Salama. He went to his wife Umm Salama. Because he commanded them, the Prophet Sallallahu commanded the companions, even though we haven't performed Umrah, everyone shave your heads and slaughter your uh, sacrifices. You guys with me or not, guys? So, boy, if you don't understand the story, the, the, the tafsir of the is going to be confusing. Because all of these things are in the surah. We're just going to link it. <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu told the companions, everyone shave your heads. The companions refused. They didn't do it. The Prophet became so upset and sad. He went to Umm Salama. She said, what's wrong? Are you okay? He said, I fear the punishment of Allah will come because they have disobeyed me. They have not done what I told them to do. Look, the Prophet he doesn't have pride. Why is he upset? Is he upset because they never listened to him? La. I fear Allah's punishment will be set upon us. So she advised him and said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you start cutting your head, start shaving your head, start shaving your head, and they'll just copy you. Likewise, slaughter your sacrifice, your, your animal, and they'll copy you as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done exactly that. And they all copied him. And they all done the same thing. One of the benefits will come to later on is what would have a lot of brothers done if their wife gave them advice to do something? I think I'm alpha male, I'm the guy, I can't accept her advice, etc. Brothers said, listen. And the advice worked. Al Muhim, some of the companions they started shaving their heads and some of them started cutting their heads. Some of Muhalliqeen, some of Muqassirin. So the one of the companions came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, everyone, the, the majority of them are what? Oh, sorry, there's a lot of them that are just cutting and not shaving. The Prophet said, Rahimallahu al-Muhallakin. May Allah have mercy upon those who shave their heads. Then the companion asked, What about those who cut their heads, not shave? Again he said, May Allah have mercy upon those who shave their head. And he asked again, Okay, but what about those who just cut their hair and not shave? Again, the Prophet said, May Allah have mercy upon those who shave their head. How many times? Three times. Then he asked the fourth time. And then the Prophet said, May Allah also have mercy upon those who cut their hair and not shave it. And those who shorten their hair. That's where we get the sunnah when you perform Umrah as well. To shave your head. Because three du'as of the Prophet will fall upon you. But can you just shorten your hair? Yes. But you only get one du'a. Al-Muhim, the companions now, a lot of them, the majority of them, upset. They don't know what's happening. They think they've lost. They're confused. You can tell. The journey back to Medina, is it the best of journeys? No. The Prophet, and by the way, you need to realize it's a long distance. There's no cars and coaches and trains now. Riding beasts that get tired and they need to rest and sleep for a bit and get back up, etc. On their way to Medina, they slept for a bit. The Prophet وسلم, he got up. <coughs> and Umar, عنه, remember, he was questioning the Messenger, وسلم, right? He called the Umar. He said, Umar, come here. Umar, the narration says, he got so scared that he thought some verses came down upon him. When he came to the Prophet the Prophet smiling. He says, last night a surah that is the most beloved surah to me came down. And then he started reciting, Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina liyawfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min dhambik. All the way up to verse number 4. Then Umar started crying. Because what did it say? So far it's all to do with the Prophet Sallallahu right? <coughs> We are giving you a clear picture of Muhammad so we can forgive your sins that came before those to come later. And we may bestow our favor upon you and guide you to the straight path. So far, who is it all about? Muhammad Sallallahu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What else? He is the one who sent down the uh, Sakina, the tranquility upon his believers, etc. When he got to verse number 4, Umar and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is all about you. Did anything come down upon us? Then he said, Hari and Mari'a. Congratulations, Mabrook! The following verses came down upon you guys. Because did the Prophet finish with the recitation of the Surah? What's the next one? The also 
ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار. Allah is going to give you guys a victory as well soon to come. We're going to come to what that is. So Allah may enter the believing men and women into Jannah, gardens in which rivers flow beneath, and Allah may expiate their sins. Because Umar thought to himself, what? Umar thought he sinned by saying that stuff to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, so Allah may forgive their sins as well. This is indeed a, um, a true success. Now guys, the story is done there, but what I want to touch upon now is the victory that's been spoken about. So this story I just told you guys is called Sulh al The agreement or the treaty of Hudaybiyah. It's, an, it's called an agreement. Why? Who is the agreement between Quraysh and the Prophet Led by Yusuf Suhaim. Wadih. This agreement is called Sulh al Why? The agreement of Hudaybiyah because that's where it took place. Now what we need to realize is why when am I saying we indeed are giving you a great victory? It's talking about the victory of Hudaybiyah. It's not talking about Fatwa Mecca. What's going to take place years later as a result of the agreement is that the Muslims are now going to be able to do what? Go to Mecca freely. The Prophet's life mission was what? To spread Islam. That's what he cried for his believers for. In fact, Prophet ﷺ, sometimes the narration say that he wouldn't think of killing himself, but his emotions would be so much that he was guidance for the people, for everyone to become Muslim, they would put his life at risk. That's all he wanted. He didn't want dunya, he didn't want money, he didn't want wealth, he didn't want women, nothing like that. He just wanted la ilaha illallah to spread. That was his mission. That was his aspiration, his ambition. That's what he breathed for. That's what we should all breathe for as well. So the reason why it's a victory is why now that this agreement has taken place, the result of the agreement is now I can give da'wah openly. Now I can go to Mecca and invite Quraysh and the disbelievers of them and likewise the politics to Islam. And they're going to become Muslim. Likewise, we can live at peace in Medina. Even in Medina, I can spread Islam openly. It's a victory for that reason. In fact, what happens afterwards, there's other wars that take place. Afterwards, where the believers, they conquest Mecca. Because of this agreement, could they go in there before? La. The Muslims are going to become more, 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 more. And they are going to become more than that polytheists in Mecca. And that's why now today we have, when you go to Mecca, why? What do we have in Mecca? Peace. What's the overruling religion? Islam. Are they polytheists? La. This is because the believers took over Mecca afterwards. And what happened a year later, by the way, is the companions and the Prophet ﷺ, they performed the Umrah. And when they performed the Umrah, the Prophet ﷺ, between Marwa and Safa and Marwa, you know there's that little gap where you should jog a bit, right? Likewise, when you're doing Tawaf, what, 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 do you do it slowly or do you go a bit faster? To go a bit faster. Of course, if you're crowded, you won't be able to. But like these 1,400 people, when they went, they, go, they were doing a fast. Asa'i ibn al-Safa al they were doing a fast as well, they were jogging in that little gap. The reason for that is a hadith which explains it. Kufar of Quraysh, they were saying to the companions that they're small in number, they're weak, they're not as strong as us, even in terms of their iman. Generally, the Muslims of Medina, they're weak. So when they came, to show that they're not weak, that's the reason why they run. Prophet Sallallahu commanded them, everybody when you're doing the tawaf, go there faster, do a ramlu. Ramlu is, can you don't jog or run, but do fast pace. Likewise, run between Safa and Marwa and Ali Wakam. It's to show them, la 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 la, the Muslims are not weak. Al-Muhim, last thing inshallah before we go into the surah, the Prophet وسلم, on his way back, when he came back to, on his way back, some of the verses we're going to come to, inshallah, Allah says, O oh Muhammad, when you go back to Medina, some of those that were left behind, the hypocrites that decided to not come, they're going to say to you, 
We didn't come because we were busy with our families, our wives, our children, and work. Then they're going to say to you, seek forgiveness for us, please. Say to them, O oh Muhammad, I can't help you in this situation. You decided to not come. However, Allah is merciful. He punishes those he wishes and he forgives those he wishes. If Allah wants to do either, I cannot benefit you. When he got there, they said exactly that to him. Look at this. When they got, when the companions got to Medina, that's, that was the excuse. The Prophet didn't know this though. He just considered them hypocrites because they never told him the reason before he left. I knew it in the beginning because of course I already knew through the surah. When the Prophet was leaving, they never knew. When they came back, on the way, these verses are coming down, Allah is telling them, they're going to see this, say this. Another thing Allah says is, O oh, Muhammad, when you go there, the battle of Khaybar takes place very soon after. The battle of Khaybar was a small battle. And Allah basically guaranteed that the believers will win. But there's going to be what? When the believers win, what is there to be taken? Spoils of war. Allah said, when you go back to them, they're going to say, can we come with you guys to the next war? But the reason they want to do that is to take the spoils of war. Another benefit which I'll come to later, look how Allah exposes the hypocrites. Imagine the verse coming down upon you. Brothers, in fact, inshallah, we'll come into a layla where hypocrisy is something which we shouldn't take easily. Allah will expose the hypocrite unless, of course, through his mercy and kindness, he covers his sins for him. Someone who's a hypocrite has two faces. One time he's a good Muslim, in front of the people, behind closed doors, he's not, etc., etc. Of course, if he falls into sin every now and then, that's not what we're talking about. But he's daiman, two-faced. He's in danger of being exposed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they're going to say to you, O Muhammad, they're going to say to you, when you tell them this, tell them first, you're never going to come with us. We refuse. The reason you're not going to come with us is because you refuse to come to Hudaybiyah. And you guys are trying to change the decree of Allah and the promise of Allah, which is, the promise of Allah is what? Those who took part in that war are going to take the spoils of war of this war. That was the decree of Allah. That's what Allah, He made confirmed. Say to them, you people are trying to you change around what Allah said. You're never going to come. Oh Muhammad, they're going to reply to you and say, you people, the only reason that you don't want us to come with you to Khaybar is because you don't want us to take the spoils of war as well and you're being envious of us. You want to take all the wealth. Reply to them, Muhammad, and say, you people, you have no intellect. Except a little. The little intellect they have which will come to is, you people only know about the dunya. Money, wealth, that's all you think about. Like when you think about akhirah, and you're fighting in the cause of Allah, and getting, being a shaheed, and you people, la yafqahun illa qabir. al Allah says then, say to them, O Muhammad, when you get back, and they say this to you, look at this. You people are going to be invited to take place, to take part in another war that's going to take place. But it's not like that khaybar. Khaybar is an easy war that's going to come. We're guaranteed to win as well. This war is going to be a major, major war. And it's going to be with a people of Qawmin Uli Baksin Shadeed, of high military force and strength. You people have that opportunity. You want to prove your Iman? You can take the spoils of war then. The spoils of war then. But you have to come there and fight them or they become Muslims. If you turn away, you'll be punished a great punishment in the Akhir and in the dunya. But if you people take part in it, what's going to happen? Allah will give you a great reward in the form of Jannah. Then the Prophet of course goes back and he says this to them, etc. I want to conclude inshallah ta'ala by saying this is the moment that the Prophet is da'wah, it had a huge time. Number one, he can go and give da'wah, guys. This is the main thing. The reason why it's a victory is because Sulaq al Fadibiyah, this agreement allowed Islam to spread openly now. It's when the light of Islam could finally beam around the world openly. The companions never knew that in the beginning, but now of course they realize it. 
So inshallah, we're going to do, we're going to go through the surah, and we're going to link where in the, where in the story all of this is. Ta'ib, with other benefits, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna fatahna, indeed, O Muhammad, we have given you a victory. Fathan mubina, a great victory. You can imagine, guys, why did the Prophet sallallahu say, a surah came down upon me, O people, to Umar, that is the most beloved surah to me. Imagine the grief, sorrow, and sadness he was going through all this time. Likewise, that was only in private. His family is persecuted. He's been kicked out of you know, Mecca, etc. And then Allah sends these verses down to him. Oh, Muhammad, we've given you a great victory. We're going to give you a great victory. What's that great victory? Surah al Fadaymiyah. And in this treaty you just went in right now, it's a great victory for you. The reason why we're giving you this victory is Allah. <coughs> so Allah may forgive your sins. The sins, guys, that are forgiven, ma taqaddama, that which came before, wa ma ta'akhara, and that which is to come, is a slight difference of opinion. Is a slight difference of opinion. One of them mentions and says, which is the best opinion, inshallah, is it's not actual sins that are to come. Rather, they are deeds that are fadaim, virtuous acts that are extras, extra, extra acts. Now the Prophet sallallahu sometimes might not do, for whatever reason. Sometimes he might not do. Allah is considering this as a sin. Is it a sin? La. They're righteous actions. But because he didn't, these little things he didn't do that are shortcomings, Allah says, that are to come later and those that went before, so Allah may forgive you for them, so you don't have to come to them. That's one. The second opinion, which is also a good opinion, that Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Sa'ud also mentioned is, the Battle of Hunayn, I believe, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Uhud, one of those two, or it's vice versa. So, ma taqaddama, the one that came before, was that of Uhud. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of those two. He, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said a statement, which Allah considered to be a sin. He said, O oh Allah, if you do not give if you do not give us victory on this day, you will never be worshipped on the face of this earth again. That's my taqaddam. Later on in the battles to come, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I said it's vice versa, right? Either Hunayn or Battle of Badr, vice versa, whichever one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, basically, he commanded one of the companions to throw certain arrows in certain ways. And then the Prophet sallallahu he praised himself, not out of arrogance, but he said, look, it was our tactics and the way we fought, etc., that gave us victory today. That is for all to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, for that sin that is to come, also for you to be forgiven. Is that clear or not clear? So again, they're not sins, but they are what? They're speeches that maybe you should not have said. That's not a sin necessarily. It's not kabair or salai. The Prophet said is, Ma'asum, it's free from these sins. So the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving victory to the believers in the form of Hudaybiyah is so Allah may forgive the sins of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that have gone and that are to come. وَيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ So Allah may bestow His favor upon you. What's His favor Allah is going to bestow upon him? Huh? La. La. What about Tawheed? That would be the person that would come with the devotion The bestowing of the favor upon Muhammad, likewise with all of the prophets. The reason for that is so Allah may allow your message to spread. The name of Allah for Muhammad is for him to succeed in his message of spreading Islam. That's it. Another reason is so Allah may guide you believers to the straight path. Also, so Allah Yansuraka may aid you Nasran Aziz and a great mighty aid. Allah is the one who sent tranquility upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qaida Abdullah ibn Saudi says, Kullu Sakinatin fil Quran hiya tumaina. Illa Alati fi Surah al Baqarah. 
Every single word in the Quran which says Sakina, it means Tumanina, tranquility. Except the one in Surah Al-Baqarah when it's talking about, it means the, the knife. You know, the Surah Al-Qisra of Musa Isa. لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا So they may increase in Iman مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ Along with the Iman they already have. This verse here, this part here, لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ is one of the evidences that Al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah used to prove what? That Iman يَزِيدُ وَيَنْقُصُ Compared to those who said, Iman doesn't go up and down. واضح؟ وَلِلَّهِ جُنُوتُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belong the soldiers of the heavens. He's talking about the angels. وَالْأَرْضِ And the soldiers of the earth are the believers. Meaning, Hudaybiyah are all believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who aid you with angels from the sky if you needed to. Likewise, the believers of the earth. For them to fight against the disbelievers. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ يَدِيلُ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا إِذْ وَنَّوِنْ حَكِيمًا All wise. لِيُدْخِلَ لِيُدْخِلَ I told you guys when Umar al-Khattab was scared when he thought that a verse came down upon him, the Prophet said, what? Because the companions are confused thinking, okay, these are all about you, what about us? So that Allah may also enter the believing men and women into Jannah. A garden which rivers flow beneath. And they will live inside there forever. And Allah may also forgive their sins. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ إِنِّي بِيْكَ ذَا الظَّفْرُ بِالْمَرْغُوبِ is to grab onto that which is yearned for وَالنَّجَاتُ مِنَ الْمَرْهُوبِ And to be saved from that which people run away from. Ulama, they took that any time you see in the Qur'an foes, success, it means to be said to, to attain something which is yearned for, which is what? What's yearned for? Jannah. And to be saved from وَالنَّجَاتُ مِنَ الْمَرْهُوبِ That which people run away from is to be saved from, which is? Jannah. This is in line with the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاتِهِ Indeed, whomsoever زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ Whoever is diverted away from where? The hellfire. وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ And is entered into Jannah. What happened? فَقَدْ فَاتِهِ So that's what foes means. Anytime you see in the Quran foes, success, this is what it is. Likewise, Allah is going to وَيُعَذِّبَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ He's going to punish the... the the men hypocrites. Well, munafiqat and women hypocrites. Who are they? Those who didn't come. And who else? Those who hid behind the camera and didn't come and agree with the Prophet. Well, mushrikeen and Allah is also going to punish the polytheist men. Well, mushrikati, the polytheist women. Qaida. The munafiqeen are the, always going to be those of Medina. The mushrikeen in the Quran are the overwhelming majority of the time going to be those who are Mecca. So I just told you munafiqat, munafiqeen and munafiqat are who? The believers that were in Medina who didn't come, and those who came but didn't agree to fight. They were from Medina, right? So, and the mushrikeen are those in Mecca. Allah made sulh al Hudaybiyah, so He may punish them in the years to come later on. Those who assumed of Allah an evil assumption. Who assumed of Allah an evil assumption? Hands up. Who assumed of Allah an evil assumption? Okay, someone on the back. Allah said, so Allah may punish those. The reason why Allah is going to you know, give a victory to the believers is, Surah so Al-Dabi, what happened? So Allah may punish those who assumed of Allah an evil assumption. Who are they? Quraysh. What did they assume of Allah? They didn't assume it was Rahman or Rahim. Okay, that's a good answer, but it's not right. Okay, it's a good uh, answer. The Munafiqeen that didn't go with the Prophet. Good. The Munafiqeen that didn't go with the Prophet, they had an evil assumption of Allah, right? What was their evil assumption? That they're not going to come back. Are you with me or not? Those that 
that assumed of Allah that they're not going to return. We don't even know if you believe he's going to come back with the Prophet So Allah may punish them. And then there's a dua. Alayhim da'ira to sow. May upon them be the circulation of evil. Meaning, may their whole life be evil. May evil before them. وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمَ اللَّهُ إِذِي إِذْ أَنْجُ وَأَمْنَمْ وَلَعَنَهُمْ اللَّهُ إِذْ لَيْفَ إِذْ كَاسْتَمْ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ اللَّهُ إِذْ بَرْفَرْ فِلَمْ جَهَنَّمَ وَالسَّاءَةْ مَصِيرَ وَالْإِيبُ الْأَسْتِنَيْشِنْ جَهَنَّمَ إِذْ وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْإِنْدِيدِ بِلَمْتُ اللَّهُ وَمُبَشِّرًا and he give her of glad tidings وَنَذِيرًا and أَنَوْنَا مُبَشِّرًا whenever Muhammad is described as a مُبَشِّر it's a one who gives glad tidings to the believers and نَذِيرًا is the one who gives warning to the polytheists to have yet to accept Islam to accept Islam and warn them about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لِتُؤْمِنُوا so you people the human beings can believe in Billahi Allah Rasuli and his messenger. But to Azirohu so you may support Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Other ulama they mentioned that the Haad or Dabir goes back to the deen of Allah. But to Azirohu a but to Azirohu deen Allah. Or even if you say it's Allah Himself, so you support Allah is coming back to deen Allah. Half al mudaf. But to Wakirohu and you may honor him. But to Sabbihu a you honor the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What you said before, and you may glorify Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Book after the morning, you are seen and likewise in the evenings. This verse, who is it kind of alluding to? Who is it kind of putting a finger to? A bit, not fully. But what is that confirmation of one of the companions? What is he saying to the Prophet Sallam? What is Umar saying? We know upon the Hak. Are you not the Messenger of Allah? Sah. Inna asmaq shahid. A mubashir. A nadira. It's true. Yes, he is. لِتُوْ مِنُوْ So you people believe in him. All of that is an introduction. It's a way of Allah comforting the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Saying we are with you. With the soldiers and the heavens and the earth. We're here to protect you. A victory is going to come to you, O Muhammad. All of these things are what? You're going to attain Jannah. The previous sins will be forgiven. Surah Al-Qadibiyya is not a loss. There's a victory coming. Now the story begins. Allah says, not begins, but the rest of it is specifically about the story. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ إِنْدِيبْ those يُبَايِعُونَكَ that pledge allegiance with you, O Muhammad إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ they are only and exclusively pledging allegiance with Allah. Look at this. Pledging allegiance with the Prophet ﷺ is what? Pledging allegiance with Allah. قَاعِدَة Allah and His Messenger are never differentiated except in the topic of Tawheed and Aqeedah. However, in the area of the Risala, in the area of the Hidayah, they are not separate. And in the area of the Ta'a and the Ma'asiyah, from the angle of obedience, disobedience, the message of Islam, conveying it, whatever Allah said is what the Prophet said as well. Sah? So Allah is saying, whoever pledged allegiance with you, he's pledging allegiance with me. Yet Allah, Allah's hand, folk are deems above their hand as well, the believers. Allah's hand is with you as well. This is an evidence that the Sunnah wal Jama'ah use that Allah has a hand. A hand which is haqiqiyya, a real hand which befits him. It has qadr al-mushtarak wa qadr al-mumayyiz al-fadiq, a portion that is similar to humans as well. When I say similar to humans, I mean a portion of it. The word hand in its meaning is the meaning that it has with all of the creation. Say it all the time. I was not trying to get into Aqeedah points because you might confuse people and it needs maybe one year of study. But right now, the word hand is there a general meaning everyone understands the hand to be. General meaning. Yes? Yeah. When we hear the word foot, it's a general meaning that the word foot has linguistically, right? Likewise, mercy. The word mercy, there's a general meaning it has linguistically. Yes or no? The scholar they mentioned and said, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah specifically, he has a qaida which he says, every characteristic, there's a qadr mushtaq. 
the linguistic meaning that we all just generally know that every single person that comes under this word has, it has that meaning. Mercy, what connotation does mercy have? <coughs> yeah, you guys know what mercy means. Okay, whatever we all know mercy to mean, that is the portion that is similar to the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah and the mercy of creation, they have just that little amount, the amount that we all consider what mercy is to be, that amount is Qadr Mushtaq. Is an amount which is yani, uh, between Allah and likewise His creation. But that is where people like the Mu'tazila and other groups, they went wrong. They said there can't be such thing as Qadr Mushtaq. There's no such thing as Allah can't have a characteristic that any creation has on the face of this earth. Any creation. So what they've done is they negated characteristics of Allah. They said Allah doesn't have a hand. Likewise, characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only his names they took. Okay, he's Rahman, he's Rahim, but characteristics. Allah has a foot. La, 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 la. Creation happens. What we say to them is, what about these verses? Where Allah says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَةً What about يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ There's a hadith, in fact, which mentioned the description of Allah's hands, specifically. Also, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? خَرَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ Some of them, they said, what is referred to when Allah says, I created with my hand, I created Adam with my hand, it's talking about, I created Adam with my mercy and power. Who can give a reply to that? And inshallah, I have some books, I'll give them as a gift to inshallah. There's a group that said, when Allah is talking about a hand, he says Allah's hand, Allah's hand, is talking about his power, his mercy. Look, you do what he folk are He said Allah's power is over their power. It's not an actual hand. Allah created Adam with what? His hand. He said that, his power, etc. Who can give an answer to this inshallah? The specific reason why Allah told you. Iblis to do substance to Adam because Iblis himself was created from the Quwa. So if it was this, if it was Quwa, if Adam was created from Allah's Quwa, Shaitan would be like, how could you create, how could you tell me to prostrate to him when we made from this, when we were both here from power? So there's a specific reason as to why Adam was made to, uh, Iblis had to prostrate to Adam. Okay. So you just, uh, you what Allah said, Allah created Adam with what? Well, no, we want to reply to you. The hand that Allah talks about in the Quran, especially when He says, I created Adam with my hand, He means, I created Adam with my power and mercy. Man Jawab. I'm not sure if this is how I was talking. Without guessing, by the way, can you? Can't come up with anything in your head, Mishra. Oh, okay. You can't, no, no. Okay, so how does that show when Allah is saying that I created Adam with my hand, it's specifically talking about when they said it's not mercy. We're saying no, it's not mercy. And it's not power. Allah created it with his hand. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything with his power. However, with Adam created that. Adam Adam. The reply Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi, guys, Shaykh al-Islam is mashallah, he's uh, and Allah, he's, he's something else when it comes to his brain and the cat. Allah, he this is the reason why Shaykh al Islam. He says, okay, Allah dan ikhtisas. When Allah said, khalaqtu biyadayn. Allah said, why are you not frustrated to ma khalaqtu biyadayn? Why are you not frustrated to that which I created with my hands? That's ikhtisas. Allah dan what? He exclusified creation of Adam with his hands to only Adam, right or wrong? I'll say that again. Allah specified and said, I created Adam with my hands. Meaning, he is the one that I created with my hands. Him. Others, Allah well, didn't say he created them with his hands. Are you guys with me or not? Because the man is there, he's talking about Adam alayhi salam. <coughs> Shaykh Islam tell me, he says, if Allah specified and exclusified the creating of Adam with his hands, if it means power, then that doesn't have exclusivity anymore because Allah created all of creation with his mercy and power. Are you with me or not? He says mercy and power, that means Allah didn't create us with mercy. Allah didn't create us with power, these, these kind of things. 
المهم يدو الله فوق أيديه الله is saying Allah's hand is above their hands أي الله is with them those people that put their hands out and said we are going to pledge allegiance Allah's hand is above them فمن نكث من سبب breaks the promise فإنما ينكث then he's just breaking that promise على نفسه upon himself أي he's only at his own loss ومن أوفى عن whomsoever fulfills بما عاهد عليه الله Whoever fulfills that which he promised and pledged with Allah, فسيؤتيه Allah will give him in the hereafter أجرا عظيما a great reward. سيقول لك المخلفون سيقول لك المخلفون Those who are left behind O Muhammad that did not come with you are going to say Sir, they will say when you go back to them من الأعراب Those who are from the Arab Generally, guys, the hypocrites and the disbelievers, most of the time, are what? Bedouins. Al-A'rab wa ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa. The Bedouins are the hard-headed ones normally. They don't accept Islam. They're a bit backward, etc. So Allah said the Arab Bedouins that had been left behind, that didn't come with you, they're going to say to you, Muhammad, Shagharatna awamna awa wawf bizilas. وَأَهْلُونَا And our wealth has busied us. يَقُولُ فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا Seek repentance for us. Seek forgiveness for us, O Muhammad. يَقُولُونَ They say it behind the scene with their tongues. مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ That which is not in their hearts. i.e. they're hypocrites. قُلُ سَيْتِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ Who has the ability to you من الله from Allah شيئاً at all. Who has any ability when it comes to Allah إن أراد بكم ضرا if Allah wills with you evil who has any ability to go against it أو أراد بكم نفعا or Allah wills with you benefit and good who has the ability to help you بل who can remind me if he was here for جزء عامة the تفسير of it what does بل mean in the Quran ها لا not كلا what does bell mean in the Quran? Bell. Yeah, it's kalimatu idrab. You want to say, forget about this. In fact, it's like we say to you, Jaa Muhammadu, Muhammad came. Bell akhuhu. Forget about Muhammad is coming. Bell akhuhu. In fact, his brother came as well. Bell zawjatuhu. Forget about just him and his brother coming. In fact, his wife came as well. Bel ummuhu. Forget about them just coming. Even his mom came. Are you with me or not? So what does this mean here? Forget about Allah subhanahu wa Forget about anyone aiding you people. Forget about anyone aiding you from Allah if he wants to punish you. Forget about that. Kaan Allah who Allah is. Bima ta'amaluna khabiran. Allah is one who knows that which you're doing. That which you're doing. Bel. Forget about Allah just knowing what you people are doing. ظَنَنْتُمْ You people assume أَنْ لَنْ يَنْقَلِبَ الرَّسُولِ You assume that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not return. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And you assume that the believers will not return. إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ To their families. أَبَدًا Ever. وَزُيِّنَ ذَلِكَ That was beautified فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ In your hearts. وَظَنَنْتُمْ ظَنَّ السَّوْءِ And you believe the assumption of evil. وَكُنْتُمْ أَنْ يُبْلِيبَ بِنَا بِقَامْ قَوْمًا بُورًا A doomed, destructive, destroyed people وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ And whosoever does not believe بِاللَّهِ إِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ and his messenger فَإِنَّا then indeed we أَعْتَدْنَا have prepared لِلْكَافِرِينَ for the disbelievers سَعِيرًا A blazing fire وَلِلَّهِ and belong to Allah مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ the kingdom of the heaven وَالْأَرْضِ أَيْ وَمُلْكُ الْأَرْضِ and the kingdom of the earth يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَ he forgives whomsoever he wills. And likewise, he punishes whomsoever he wills. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَنِ لِيَ اللَّهِ is غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا all merciful and all forgiving. Guys, look at this. What was Allah talking about? Who is Allah addressing in this part? You know when he says that the Bedouins that didn't come with you, they're going to make these excuses, say this to them. Who is he talking about? The Bedouin, hypocrites, right? Look at what Allah said. Allah is saying, Allah described them not coming. يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ 
Allah forgives whomsoever he wills. And he punishes whomsoever he wills. Even though Allah is saying they're hypocrites, he's still saying to them, I can forgive you. Just turn back. Guys, being mentioned by Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, for him to send down speech of his that came from him, and for, your, for, for it to be read that you are a hypocrite until the day of resurrection is something huge. Even that person Allah is saying, I still will forgive you. Just seek forgiveness. But look what Allah said after that. It's not just about my forgiveness. I also punish. So if you don't, then you'll be punished. Because you committed a sin. But the they took a qa'id from this. They said, number one, we are a people who believe Allah is number one. Number one, ghafil them, forgives, waqabil tawb, accepts repentance. However, what else? Shadidul iqab. Is that not allowed in this verse? Yaghfiru li man yasha. Why didn't you stop it there? Allah forgives him, so he knows. La. This is the belief of the murji'ah. They say, commit any sin you wish. Don't pray any salah if you wish. Have iman in your heart. Allah will forgive you. You don't need to do anything. Don't even say a stop for Allah. What do we say? La, 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 la. Allah, He forgives, but He also punishes. Which one is bigger? His mercy. Most of the time when Allah puts punishment and mercy or punishment and forgiveness next to each other, the ulama, they said, the forgiveness comes first. To show that it has overrode, overridden his anger and punishment. etc. Allah even says, Sayyidul Mukhalafun, O Muhammad, those Bedouin Arabs who were left behind, they are also going to say to you, when you set out towards when you set out towards taking the spoils of war which spoils of war? Khaybar <coughs> Look, Allah is telling Muhammad guys, what are these say 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 one of the benefits I took down was it's a proof that this Quran is from Allah Of these things, knowledge of the unseen Allah is saying, Oh Muhammad, they're going to say this to you. Oh Muhammad, they're going to say when you go back to them now, this to you. Oh Muhammad, in fact, in Khaybar, they're going to say to you, let us come with you. Say to them, Oh Muhammad, why? لِتَأْخُذُوهَا They're going to say to you, regarding Khaybar, ذَرُونَا Let us, نَتَّبِعْكُمْ Follow you. ذَرُونَا Let us, نَتَّبِعْكُمْ Follow you. How many people saw the answer of the correctly? Two, right? Two. يُرِيدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said They wish or they want to and you bet they will change kalam Allah. They want to change the words of Allah. What's the words of Allah? Who is that take the souls of all? The people that took part in Hudaybiyah. They're going to think it's possible. That's the kalam Allah. You read do that and you went to kalam Allah. They want to change the word of Allah that those who took part of the are going to take the spoils of war of Khaybar by saying, let us take it with you as well. Qul say to them, Lan tattabiruna. You're never going to come with us. Kadalikum. That speech. Qalallahu min qabl. The speech of what? You're never going to come with us. Allah said this already before. Fasayakul and what's their reply gonna be? Bal. Who can tell me what bal here means? Fasayakuluna bal tahsudunana. Ayah. Fasayakuluna bal tahsudunana. What does that mean? Come on guys, I know a lot of you know Arabic. What does it mean? Look, Allah is saying they're going to say to you, let us come with you, da da da, etc. And then they're saying, no, Allah said only those who took part in the Hudaybiyah uh, are going to take the spoils of war. They're going to reply and say to you, look, what was their point? You're not going to come with us. Why? Because Allah already confirmed and said, you're not going to come. So now what does it mean? 
A ver. Forget about you claiming Allah said it. Forget about you people saying Allah said it before. La, tahsudunana, you're envious. You don't want us to come and take the spoils of war as well. Bal, forget about you being envious, O Muhammad. Kanu la yafqahuna, these people, these hypocrites, they don't have any intellect. They do not comprehend or understand anything. Illa qalilan except a little. They don't understand. Illa qalilan. يعلمون ظاهرا من الحياة الدنيا وهم عن الآخرة هم غافلون. That's what it is. These people know the matters of the dunya. Those of war, money, wealth. That's what they know. Matters of the hereafter, however, غافلون. They are not aware of Jannah being a martyr, taking place, they are taking part in jihad. These things they are heedless about. قل سيد الله محمد للمخلفين سيد to those people that were left behind. من العرابي from those Arab Bedouins, the Bedouins. ستدعون you will be called and invited to. إلى قوم أولي بأس أي إلى قتال قوم أولي بأس. You will be called to fight against a people of great military force. تقاتلونهم you either fight them or you surrender or they go to surrender. فإن تطيعوا if you people agree. If you people, you obey and fight in this upcoming war that's going to come later, you take them Allah, Allah will give you. Ajran, a reward, hasanan, a great reward. Lilladina ahsanu, lilladina ahsanu al-husna, wa ziyada. Allah will give them Jannah. Wa yinta tawallu ahawi fi tan way kama tawallitum min qabla as you turn away before, yu'adhibukum, you'll be punished, adaban, aliman, a great, a painful punishment. ليس على الأعمى حرج there's no blame upon the one who's blind ولا على الأعرج حرج and neither is there blame upon the one who's disabled ولا على المريض حرج neither is there blame upon the one who is sick to fight so those that didn't come to Hudaybiya because they were sick, disabled or blind there's no blame upon them ومن هم سؤبا يطع الله وبيز الله ورسوله ومن is messing up يدخله الله أنتهم إن جنات جنات. Those gardens which تجري من تحتها beneath the flow of the Nahru rivers. ومن هم سؤبا يتولى تزوي يعذبها الله وبنش من عذاب الأليم الذين في قرشنا. لقد إندي رضي الله عن الله is pleased with. عن المؤمنين the believers in a time. يبايعونك a time which they pledge allegiance with you تحت الشجرة underneath the tree. فعلم من الله من الحارت ما في قلوبهم ذا وش زين الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأنزل السكينة من الله سندام شكلة عليهم قمنا وأثارهم من الله رؤوس رؤوس الدموين فتح قريبا إمن الفيتري ومغانمة أي وأثابهم مغانمة الله وصل قيدهم سوز أفو كثيرة العمل يأخذونها بيتكلم وكان الله يدير الله عزيزا ومايتي حكيما ووايز وعدكم الله الله سبحانه وتعالى مغارم كثيرة اللقب سبوز أبو تأخذون هذا الكتاب وتيك فعجل لكم الله هيست this one الخير الفوي هذه this one وكف أيدي الناس الله يهوب على hands of the people عنكم from me why لتشكروا هي عايز تزوا واي تزوا ولي تكون آية صح؟ meaning there's something missing which is معطوف عليه. look I'll say the verse again. Allah has promised you many spoils of war that you will take many until you people die and it's going to be many spoils of war to come in the future. فعجل لكم هذه Allah he has said this one of خيبر for you. وَكَفَّ أَيْدِيَ النَّاسِ عَنْكُمْ And Allah, He held back the hands of the people from you. 
Wali Tarakuna Ayata. And so that it may be. Where is this? There's a fi'l ma'dufi which is لِتَشْكُرُوهُ Allah is giving you all of these things. Allah is giving you victory. Allah is giving you likewise a lot of spoils of war. He held back the hands of the people from you so you can take the spoils of war. Likewise, He never sent, you know, uh, the kuffar of Quraysh to come and fight against you. Why? لِتَشْكُرُوهُ So you may show gratitude to Allah. وَلِتَكُونَ آيَةً So it can also be a ayah, a sign لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ for the believers. وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ مُوسَى So Allah may guide you سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا to the straight path. وَأُخْرَى أَيْ وَمَغَانِمَ أُخْرَى And Allah has also given you وَعَدَكُمْ Allah has also promised you أُخْرَى إِنْ مَغَانِمَ أُخْرَى He's promised you other spells of war لَمْ تَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهَا You are currently unable to attain. However, قَدْ أَحَاطَ اللَّهُ بِهَا Allah indeed is keeping it in store for you. Ulema, they mentioned that it's the battle of Rum that's to come later on. غُلْبَةُ الرُّوم فِي أَدْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ غَلْبِهِمْ سَيَرْبُونَ You guys aren't able to take it now, but the believers to come later, they're going to take this course of war. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَنَ اللَّهِ ذِبِيدِ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ أَوْ أَبْتِنْ قَدِيرًا وَنْ is able وَلَوْ and if قَاتَلَكُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا If the disbelievers actually fought against you, which disbelievers? The Mushrikeen that were in Mecca, if they actually came and fought against you, what would happen? لَوَلَّوْ They would have turned an adbara their backs. They would have turned their backs. ثُمَّ and then لَا يَجِدُونَ They would not find وَلِيًا a protector وَلَا نَصِيرًا or anyone that helps them. They will turn their backs, but they're not going to escape. You guys are going to destroy them. They won't have anyone to help them. Sunnat Allah. A sunnah Allah. Sunnat Allah. This is a sunnah which Allah has made a sunnah of His. Alati na sunnah which? Qad khalat min qabl. A sunnah which has already occurred before. What's the sunnah of Allah that's already occurred before? Look, Allah is saying, this is a sunnah of Allah. When we say it's a sunnah of the Prophet what does it mean? It's a way of the Prophet right? Allah is saying, this is a sunnah of Allah. What is a sunnah of Allah? What came before it? وَلَا يَجِدُونَ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا That the disbelievers are never given a helper or a protector. And that the believers are always given victory. This is the sunnah of Allah. Always. Even the battles the believers lost, is actually victory, victory for the believers. That's a different topic. وَلَنْتَجِدَ You will never ever find لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ With the sunnah of Allah تَبْدِيلًا any change. وَهُوَ أَنْ Allah is الَّذِي لَوَانْ كَفَّ أَيْدِيَهُمْ عَنْكُمْ Allah is the one who held back their hands from you. وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ And your hands and whom from them بِبَطْنِ مَكَّةً In the depths of Mecca. Where was this? Where did Allah hold back the hands of the believers from the disbelievers and the hands of the disbelievers from the, dis the, disbelievers from the believers? I.e., no fight took place. Batani Mecca. This is Hudaybiyah. At the actual place where they stopped and they stayed at, that's where Batani Mecca is. Min ba'di after an atharakum alayhim. After he caused you to overcome them. After he caused you to overcome them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He held their hands back and your hands from them. What can Allah and Allah is? Bima ta'amaluna regarding that which you do, basira and one who sees whom they are. And ladina kafru, they are the disbelievers. Wa saddukum and they obstructed you. And il masjid al harami from the masjid al haram. They obstructed you from entering masjid al haram. Wa al hadiyya ay wa saddu al hadiyya. And they also obstructed the sacrificed animal, the camel. They obstructed ma'kufan, they obstructed the animal whilst walhal huwa ma'kufan whilst being one who's imprisoned, can't get up or anything like that. Ay yablugha mahillahu They obstructed him from reaching his place of sacrifice. He's talking about the camel of the, 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 the uh, Prophet Salaam who didn't move or anything like that. Question is going to come now. Who can tell me could Allah, if He had the ability, if Allah had the ability, could He be allowed 
the fight to take place, no one look at your books. Everyone stop looking at your books. You're Musa'ah. If Allah willed, could he have the ability? What did first? What did Allah decide to do? No fight, right? Good. Why? So he may give them victory later, sir. Question is, could Allah give the believers victory by allowing them to actually fight and then the believers winning and then taking over Mecca? Could he be allowed that? Why did he not? And we're in a masjid, so please don't look at that side. Shall I listen? Trust each other. Okay. Is it because there was believing in one of them? Nah. Mecca, the people who were in Mecca at the time of the Prophet, there were some Muslims and some disbelievers, right? Mm -hmm. What did the believers do when they were told to migrate? They migrated to where? Medina, right? Mm -hmm. There were some people that were ill and mustabafin of Allah. The weak ones. There were some women who couldn't travel. Sick ones, Atma, blind, disabled, people that had excuses to not do hijrah. Clear or not clear? Yeah. And there are some people who actually accepted Islam undercover. But they're very small in number. Allah in the next verse is saying, O oh Muhammad, you don't know of the believers that are there accepted Islam after you left Mecca. There's some believers there. If it weren't for the believers that are there now, that I know that you do not know of, if they weren't there, then I would have allowed you to fight, and they would have been destroyed. Also, if I would have been, if I gave you the ability to distinguish between the believers and the disbelievers, I would have also let you fight. But because there are some believing men and women that you do not know of, and I know of, and I, because I am the all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, and wise, that's why I do not let you fight. Walawla. And if it was not for. Rijalun men. Mu'minuna that are believing. If, if it weren't for believing men. Wanisaun mu'minatun and believing women. Mawjuduna. Lawla. The khabar of it is 99% of the time. Mawjud. Lola, if I say to you, Lola Muhammadun laqatantuk. Lola Muhammadun ladahabtu ila al-masjid. If it wasn't for Muhammad, I would have done this. If it wasn't for Ismail, I would have done this. If it wasn't for the lesson today, I would have went here. If it wasn't for this, 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 that's the answer. That's, that's the answer. Okay, what's the answer? <coughs> Let me reword that, sorry. The mutada is most of the time going to be uh, the khabar is going to be mentioned. If you didn't understand that, don't worry. Walawla, if it was not for, Rijal al believing men, Walisa al mu'minatun and also believing women. If it weren't for them, Mawjuduna, if they were, if it was not for them that they were present in Mecca, those that lam ta'lamuhum you do not know, what would have happened? And tata'uhum. You would have before them, you would have basically trampled all over them. Wata'a, yata'u means to trample all over them. Someone tramples over someone else. You would have just trampled all over them. What does that mean? You would have killed them. Because you don't know them. I know them. <coughs> then what would happen? Fatusibakum <laughs> minhum ma'arra. Then guilt and dishonor will before you. From them. How is that going to be given with dishonor? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he's killing a Muslim, later when he finds out, he's going to feel guilty. And honor likewise. <coughs> honor of them will be, SubhanAllah, you Muslims killed your Muslim. Be ghayri ilm without you knowing. Liyud khil Allah. Also, Allah did not allow it to happen, so he may enter, fi rahmati in his mercy, may he shower him whomsoever he wills. Lawla. Sorry, law. لو تزيلوا, if they had become distinguished and the believers had stood apart from the disbelievers لعذبنا الذين كفروا we would have punished the disbelievers منهم amongst them عذاب الأليم لا يبين for punishment if if I mention did we mention جرعنا that's for يوما what do we mention يوما is always to تعالى on Unless it has a word before it. When we say, وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ أَيْنَ شُرَكَانَ 
وَيَوْمَ يَعَبْدُ الظَّالِمُ We can't just say, and a day this, 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 and a day, he won't buy that day. He will be wrong. We mentioned with Amma, يَوْمَ يَوْمَ يَتَعَلَّقْ بِفِعْلِ الْمَحْذُوفِ اُذْكُرْ Mention to them a day of Muhammad. If is also the same. If a, وَذْكُرْ إِذْ جَعَلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ Remember and mention to them of Muhammad. When the disbelievers جَعَلَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ They put in their hearts الْحَمِيَّةَ Pride. Which pride? حَمِيَّةَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ They put in their hearts the pride of pre-Islamic ignorance. Mention and remember this whole hand. What are you talking about? What was the pre-Islamic pride, this custom they had? Huh? Oh, do you remember it, right? La. La. You mentioned the story. Pride, pride. Which pride? Allah, look, guys, look. Grandma, if you know, al hamiya is man, right? Any mudaf mudaf ilayhi takes the position of a ma'rifah. So al hamiya al jahiliya is basically describing as a sifa for al hamiya. So pride is just a word. But what is the hamiyat al jahiliya? Which what is it talking about? <coughs> nah. The guys, the pride of pre-Islamic Islam was that they made fun of Allah's names and attributes. Clear or not clear? So when Suhail said, Rahman, do you know Rahman? Qalu wa mar Rahman. Likewise, when he said, Rabba, the Prophet ﷺ, you say, Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah is saying, remember, O Muhammad. Mention, O Muhammad. When the disbelievers put in their hearts the custom of, or the pride of pre-Islamic <coughs> ignorance. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ Then Allah said down, سَكِينَتَهُ His tranquility. عَلَى رَسُولِهِ Upon His Messenger. وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نَاكَزْ Upon the believers. What happened when they rubbed it out? Why is Allah considering that to be Allah sending down tranquility upon the Messenger and the believers? Remember, tensions were a bit high. They didn't know, should we agree, should we not? Ya Rasulullah, we're not upon that, etc. Allah sent down tranquility upon their hearts for them to be able to put their emotions to a side and just agree. Are you with me or not? وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and also upon the believers وَأَلْزَمَهُمْ and Allah imposed upon the believers كلمة التقوى the word of God consciousness لا إله إلا الله وَكَانُوا and they are أَحَقَّ بِهَا more deserving of this word وَأَهْلَهَا and likewise they are worthy of it the companions the worthy of that they are not وَكَانَ اللَّهُ and Allah is بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ regarding everything عَلِيمًا وَنَّوِيهِ لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَبِيهِ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَفُقُوهُ His Messenger's dream رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا His Messenger's dream بِالْحَقِّ in truth لَتَدْخُلُونَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَاللَّهِ يُوَأَنْتَ 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 مَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ When Allah wills آمِنِينَ وَالْحَالُ Whilst you people are in a safe, secure circumstance مُحَلِّقِينَ وَالْحَالُ أَنْتُمْ مُحَلِّقِينَ Whilst you people are also ones that completely shame your رؤوسكم heads وَمُقَسِّرِينَ وَالْحَالُ أَنْتُمْ مُقَسِّرِينَ رُؤُوسَكُمْ Whilst you also shoot on your head لَا تَخَافُونَ وَالْحَالُ لَا تَخَافُونَ رُؤُوسَ Whilst you are not afraid of anything Allah Akbar Guys, is this not a glad tidings? Is this not good news? The man and the companions are on their way back to Medina and they hear this verse لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا فِي الْحَقِّ Indeed, Allah will fulfill His promise of making the dream of Muhammad true. Then He says with three tawkids, لَتَدْخُلُنَّ and you will enter, and you will enter, and you will enter Masjid al-Haram, whenever Allah wills. What happened a year later? They went to Umar, and they performed it. فَعَلِمَ مَا لَمْ تَعْلَمُوا Allah made a paradise which you do not know. فَجَعْلًا He made مِن دُونِ ذَلِكَ Besides this, فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا A close, imminent victory. That victory is, again, the victory, i.e. the conquest of Mecca, 
that occurred due to Sunnah al-Hudaybiyah al because now they can go there. Allah is the one. Arsala al Rasulah Rasulah with Messenger. Bilhuda with the guidance. What deen al haqqi and the true religion. Huda is Islam, deen al haqqi is Amr al or Huda is knowledge, ilm. Al ilm al nafi' wa deen al haqqi al Amr al Why did he do that? Liyudhirahu ay liyu'liyahu. So Allah may raise his religion and a deen of over all of the religions, kulli, all of them, tawqeed. Wa kafa and enough is. Billahi ay kafa Allahu, the ba is zahida to the tawqeed. Wa kafa billahi ay kafa Allahu, Allah is enough. Shaheedan as a witness of this. Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. When Ladina Ma'am and those that are with him, Ashidahu ala al kuffar, they are severe over the disbelievers. One. Ruhamahu baynahum, they are merciful between each other. Tarahum, you see them, Rukkaan, doing Rukkaan. Sujjadan, doing Sujjud. Why? يبتغون, they are seeking fadlan in Allah, the bounty of Allah. وردوانا, and the pleasure of Allah. سماه في وجوه. Their sign of Iman is upon their faces. من أثل السجود, due to the excess amount of sujood they do. There's two opinions on this. The opinion, guys, there's an opinion which a lot of you might hear. The more sujood you do, the mark that comes in your face, that's what it's talking about. The sign is on their faces due to sujood. That's not what it's talking about. There's no other or hadith. Is. There's two opinions on this. Number one, Abdullah al Abbas says, it's not even talking about here in the dunya, it's talking about the hereafter. As I said, I mentioned to us, those who used to pray salah, the athar, the effect of the salah, the ruku, and the sujood, and everything they were doing, will be seen upon their faces. Likewise, other scholars, they say, Rukka and Sujjad and Bin Atri Sujood is talking about the wudu that they used to do, but the sujood is Ibaratun and wudu. Because they who come under the Salah. Another opinion says, at least Abdullah bin Sujood, or Mujahid al Mujabri, they say, yes, it's true. In the dunya, you'll see the mark of sujood on the people's faces by the believer who prays Salah regularly. His face will be light. His face will be bright, illuminated. The person has iman, clean heart, ikhlas. You can see the glory on his face. Compared to the person, he says, that has been drowning and locked up in the shackle of sin his whole life in disbelief. And we see it as well. Mashallah, when someone you know, starts practicing, he starts to grow his beard, he prays salah. It doesn't even mean his skin is light, no. He could be very dark. But then this radiance, we don't know what it is. That's the second thing. Allah said, ذَلِكَ مَثَلُهُمْ That which I just described, that the believers are what? Harsh to the disbelievers, merciful to themselves, they do sujood and ruku' seeking Allah's bounty and His pleasure. These descriptions are found in the Torah as well. When you look at the Torah, the same descriptions. وَمَثَلُهُمْ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ and the parable of these kind of people in the Injil, the Gospel, is the following. This verse, the scholar, they say, is the verse describing Khuwa, brother. Look what Allah said. The believers are like this. Kazari. They're like a seed or a plant. Initially, before you water the plant and everything, it's a strong big, does it have branches? Nothing, right? It's weak. So it's a little doesn't have any benefit, it's just there on its own, nothing else. Sah. Then it got planted, water, sunlight, etc. What happened after that? Akhraja shata'ahu. It brought out and sprout its branches. Then the seed became, it went up, started getting some branches, 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 etc. Then what happened? فَآزَرَهُ These branches, they do, and this stem as well, what did, what did it do? فَآزَرَهُ It strengthened this seed, this plant which was weak in the beginning. 
فَاسْتَغْلَظَةً And then it became heavy and strong. Now we have a strong plant. What caused it to be strong? The branches are not stem. You with me or not? In the beginning it was weak. But because of the branches in the stem, after it sprouted, it became strong. What happened after that? Then it stood up as strong as possible on its stem. You can't move around it. It's very, very strong. What happens? When those that plant, the farmers, when they see this kind of tree, this plant, they become amazed. Wow, so big, strong. Allah said, the power I just gave you, the believers are like that. I.e., one believer is weak. He's made stronger by other believers being around him. The Muslims being one and together are like the branches. When we are more in number, upon Tawheed, upon Sunnah, the believers become more, they love each other for the sake of Allah, then we festival of Then they can stand upon their stem with, without being able to, without being able to, uh, fall apart. But without the brotherhood, without the brothers like the branches, the Muslims are going to be weak. Why did Allah do that parable? So Allah may enrage the disbelievers. When the disbelievers see disunity amongst the believers, they get happy. When the disbelievers they see unity between the believers, they get enraged. Allah said that. Allah is saying this power will so you may enrage them. When they see people together, strong, etc., they'll get upset and rage and weak. Allah concludes by saying, Wa'ada Allah Ladina Amu. Wa'ada Allah Allah has promised. And Ladina Amu, those who believe. Wa'ada Allah Salihati and righteous actions. Minhum amongst them, i.e., the believers, He has promised them Makhtarata. Forgiveness. Wa'ajar Aliman and a great reward. What came first? <coughs> the great reward is Jannah. Ulama they said, without Maghfirah, there's no Jannah. I.e., you don't seek forgiveness from your sins. Before you go to Allah and stand before Him, there's going to be a group of people that must, must, must be punished before they enter Jannah. The benefits, inshallah, we're going to go through. Um, we'll go through what time is mine? 8.35? We'll go through, inshallah, some of the benefits that the extraction was sort of in the line. stories, not so you can just listen to them as a fairy tale or a bedtime story of that. And if this is so you are reminded, likewise so you take lessons from it. So you take lessons, extract lessons, implement in your life. What are some of the lessons we can take from this noble surah? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said it's the most beloved surah to him in the Quran. Number one, you never know what's in store for you with a last decree. Even if you cannot see the wisdom there, don't think twice that there isn't wisdom. Where's that from? 
The Prophet just because we're running out of time, the Prophet he's at where? Hudaybiyah. They went to go on Umrah and all this other stuff. They've been told, you have to go. You don't want to perform it. They go in this agreement which seems to be what? A loss. The companions saw it as a loss, right? The Prophet wasallam, he was patient. He knew that even though he doesn't know why this is happening yet, he just done it. So the first benefit is, in your life, you never know what's on the other side, guys. You never know what's on the other side. And good will come when you obey Allah. Look, the companions themselves that went with the Prophet ﷺ to Mecca to fight, not to fight, but to perform Umrah, of course they had fear in their hearts as well, right? It's natural fear. But they just obeyed. What did they get at the end? The scores of war of Khaybar. But now the first point is, never, ever, ever, ever question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. When Allah says, let's do something, we do it. Can we see a wisdom? We don't know. Do we know why we should do it? We don't know. Sami'na wa ta'ala. Number two. The next one is, true victory comes directly from Allah and it comes specifically via obedience. A lot of us, we say to ourselves, the Muslims, they're in the bad state, our Muslims in all over the country, they're weak, etc., etc. When are we going to get victory? When is Allah going to aid us? Qaida one. Victory and aid only comes from Allah. Where did I get that from? Allah said, Inna fatahna laka fathan alina. Inna, Allah didn't say nah. He said, Inna, indeed, we. Now look, if you learn grammar, Fatahna, there's a or there's already what? Fatahna, there's a fi'l and fa'l, right? Allah could have just said, Fatahna laka fathan mubina. We gave you a clear victory of Muhammad. But he put a mubtada before in the form of inna, and they, the, the mubtada is also nahnu. So Allah is saying twice, inna indeed we, fatahna, we gave a victory, laka to you. Are you with me or not? Why did Allah give them victory? Why? They were obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they were obedient to Allah and they didn't go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, could not happen. They would, they would have been such things as Hudaybiyah. Like in conquest of Mecca took place after that. And now, Walillah alhamd, Mecca al Mukarrama is a land of Tawheed. You can go peacefully, come in, out. Do you know this belief that can go inside? That's two. Number three is the definition of true success. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ in the Allah goes in Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ Allah could have just said, وَكَانَ thousand عَظِيمًا There's no need for that again. You guys with me or not? The taqsis Allah made of وَكَانَ This is, ذَلِكَ That, only that, is thousand عَظِيمًا Which is what? Entering Jannah and being saved from a لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُنِينَ وَإِنَّ النَّاسِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِيمِ تَحْتِنَا فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَإِدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسْ Guys, True success, Wallahi, and I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. Someone can be poor, someone can be ill, someone can have cancer, someone cannot have any family members, someone can be the only child, someone can have his family that are uh, maybe horrible to him. Anything you go with on the surface of this earth, Wallahi, Puma, Wallahi, will be worth it with one foot into the There's no other success at all, zero. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَوُدِخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ This person فَقَدْ الْفَانِ No one else. Business is not a success. Why is business a success? Money, wealth is not a success. Health is not a success. All of these things pertaining to the dunya, none of them passing the exam, they're not a success. What do we call them? We say, if the person uses those things in the correct way, they're going to be وَسَائِلْ to success. Leads to success. 
But what a great loss. Is it that someone, he makes all of the wealth he can think of that's on the face of this earth, and then he uses it for other than the sake of Allah, and it makes him forget about Allah in the hereafter. Then he comes in the day of judgment, مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَا Your wealth doesn't help him. He stands before Allah and has absolutely no value. The man we all used to look up to, wealth, money, women, Allah has no success. So the third benefit, inshaAllah ta'ala, is that true success lies in being obedient to Allah and attaining Jannah. That's what we need to yearn for. The next benefit is that Iman goes up and down. This is a, something which we must all believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيَزْدَادُوا إِمَانًا مَعَ إِمَانِهِ Number four, or five? Four. Five. Guys, even assumption of Allah only has evil consequences. They had evil assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying what? You guys are not going to return. What was their evil consequence of their evil assumption? Huh? They, they could not take the spoils of war. Ulama, they said, whoever has evil assumptions of Allah, then that which he's asking for will come to him. And if you're begging Allah, oh Allah, give me this, oh Allah, give me that, etc., etc., you're thinking in your head, ah, oh, you know, maybe there's too many people asking Allah for something. There's evil assumptions. You're thinking maybe Allah will give it to me, etc. Then evil, only evil will happen. In the form of, you don't get what you want. Are you with me or not? Likewise, if you assume evil, such as, why is Allah making this happen to me? Why is Allah causing me to have cancer? Then only evil will take place. أَحْسِنُ ظَنَّ بِاللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى And you make good your assumptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah said in the Hadith Qudsi, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِ بِي I am according to, the way I deal with my servants is according to the assumptions they have on me. Look at how beautiful my deed. Allah is saying this. If he assumes good of me, I give him good. If he assumes bad of me, I give him bad. Whatever he assumes of me. Number six. Allah and his messenger go hand in hand. مَنْ أَطَاعَهُ مَنْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ الرَّسُولِ Whomsoever obeys Allah has obeyed his messenger. مَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ أَطَاعَ الرَّسُولِ كَذَلِكَ What did Allah say? وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا عَاهَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ What was the verse when Allah mentioned both of them together? لا ومن يطع الله ورسوله فإذا أبيز الله عز وجل يدخل جنات تجري من تحت الأرض. But we need to differentiate one thing. There's a قاعدة which is pertaining to عقيدة and worship. When it comes to worship, Allah is different to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. When it comes to obedience and anything to do with like the Quran and Salah and Ahkam and all these other things, Allah's commands are Muhammad's commands. Same. Don't differentiate between them. <coughs> the next benefit is the danger that someone's family, wife, husband, children, cousins, aunties, siblings, the danger they can have upon that person if he deals with them in the wrong way. Likewise, the danger that wealth can have upon a person. These hypocrites that said they're not going to come, what were the excuses? We're busy with our families. They put the love of their families before the love of Allah. وَإِنْ كَانَ أَبَاءَكُمْ وَأَبَنَاءَكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَقْوَالَ مِنْ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةُ تَخْشَوْنَ كِسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنْ وَتَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ we love with the hudud. Love is a worship. It's an act of worship. We base it upon Allah and His Messenger. And the main dhamit before we start the Quran and Salah for the love of your children, 
love, likewise of your wives and your mothers and anyone else, your family members, there's a main body, a measure, which is if they come before an Allah and His Messenger, so your love for them prevents something that shouldn't be prevented by Allah and His Messenger, then this is a dangerous love. For example, it's Salah time. And your wife says, oh honey, don't go, please, no, etc, etc. And he so you know, okay, fine. And you get cuddly in what's it called your sofa and just decide to watch Netflix. Likewise, your children. If you're working so much for your children, or you're missing salah, you say, I'm working for my children, this is not Allah. Al Muhim, the qaida for loving family and the danger of it, you also take from that. We'll take the rest, inshallah, ta'ala, after the salah. Allah Alam, Allah Alam, Allah Alam,
Yeah. Don't record me, don't record me. I can't stop it. What do you mean? You want to stop it? I should. I leave it in. Don't end stream. Why is it still carrying on? Huh? It's recording us right now. Yeah, I know that because I never knew how to pause it. You didn't know how to pause it? I'll show you. Swipe down. Swipe down. Listen, there's no down. No, press X. Can I just leave it? Just leave it. Double, double tap it. Huh? Double tap it, watch. You double tap it. See? No. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى السقيم والتقام هذا بيع الله في الرحمن سكت الرحمن الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين ان الذين يبايعونك ان ما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم فمن نكث فإنما ينكث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما عاهد عليه الله فسيؤتيه أجرا عظيما سيقول لك المخلفون من الأعراب شغلتنا أموالنا وأهلنا فاستغفر لنا يقولون بألسنتهم ما ليس في قلوبهم قل فمن يملك لكم من الله شيئا قل فمن يملك لكم من الله شيئا إن أراد بكم ضرا أو أراد بكم نفعا بل كان الله بما تعملون بصيرا بل كان الله بما تعملون خبيرا بل ظننتم أن لن ينقلب الرسول والمؤمنون إلى أهليهم أبدا وزين وزين ذلك في قلوبكم وظننتم ظن السوء وكنتم وظننتم ظن السوي وكنتم قوما بورا ولله ملك السماوات والأرض يغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء وكان الله غفورا رحيما الله الله لمن حمد 
الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سيقول المخلفون إذا انطلقتم إلى مغانم لتأخذوها ذرونا نتبعكم يريدون أن يبدلوا كلام الله قل لن تتبعونا كذلكم قال الله من قبل فسيقولون بل تحسدوننا بل كانوا لا يفقهون إلا قليلا قل للمخلفين من الأعراب ستدعون إلى قوم أولي بأس شديد ستدعون إلى قوم أولي بأس شديد تقاتلونهم أو يسلمون فإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله فإن تطيعوا يؤتكم الله أجرا حسنا فإن تطيعوا الله يؤتك فإن تطيعوا يؤتكم الله أجرا حسنا بل وإن تتولوا كما توليتم من قبل يعذبكم عذابا أليما ليس على الأعمى حرج ولا على الأعرج حرج ولا على المريض حرج ومن يطع الله ورسوله يدخله جنات يدخله جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها يدخله جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار وكان الله على كل شيء عليما الله الله أكبر الله الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar. Thank you. 